Hello there, YouTubers. Yes, as yet another video from yet another hotel room as the Andy Napco Pan American Goodwill Tour extends into week number two. Sorry about the lack of updates. We'll get to that in another sub episode uh, later, recorded later on. Hopefully, not from a, another hotel room. Um, yeah, I, I probably should have been able to talk to you about Apple's new announcements, but they were so exciting and I had so much to do that I didn't actually get... I was writing 6,000 words worth of stuff as opposed to recording 5 minutes worth of video. So let me take this time to say in person what my impressions are. Uh, you get the added benefit of a few extra days of thought. Let's see, let's start off actually with the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus. Oddly enough, the thing I love about both of them is just the basic shape of them. I had no idea how much I missed and enjoyed the rounded corners of an iPhone until I'm now, once again, for the first time since the iPhone 3GS, holding an object with rounded corners on it. It cannot be explained, but it's it feels better in the hand, it feels more comfortable, it's more visually appear, appealing. Your fingers wrapping around it, you don't really hold it quite so much like an object, so much as you use it as, 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 as a tool. There's a reason why the, the, the handle of a, of a hammer is usually not square, it's usually rounded off. So it's just a much more pleasant thing to hold. Not that the other one was bad, but it's nice to be back to nice, uh, nice uh, soft curves and stuff like that. The big stunner, of course, is the 5.5 inch phone, uh, which, you know, there's a reason why I, I got an Android phone a couple years ago. One of them was that I thought that Apple will never make a really big phone. Uh, and I appreciate that a lot of the appeal of larger screen phones is lost on a lot of people. It's certainly not for everybody. But for people like me, for whom the phone is very used very rarely for texting and messaging, it really is a point of uh, contact for the information and entertainment of the entire world, no matter where you are, no matter what situation you're in it's a big win and if you are not stuck with if you're stuck with not only men's clothing uh, but uh, you're also using the sort of men's clothing for people who don't really care what they look like the idea of having a big phone you've got pockets big enough for that again I go, I'm wearing my tactical pants uh, and oh, actually I can, since I haven't really packed it see I've got I've got my tactical pants and uh, I don't know if you can see it but these back these these back pockets are even big enough uh, there, I have the early generation tactical pants. They're actually big enough to put a full-size iPad into. Uh, so, <laughs> so I will have no problem uh, accommodating a big phone like that. It will be a difficulty. Shirt pockets, it is going to stick out of the shirt pocket, I think, uh, a periscope a little bit. Also, because it's that nice uh, brushed metal, yeah, you don't want to be leaning over with this in your pocket because it will tumble out again. But... Uh, my immediate reaction to holding the 5.5 inch phone is that I kind of almost think that this is the perfect size iPhone for me. Uh, I, this is sort of the iPhone I've been waiting for, at least as uh, introducing it, only having touched it for about an hour in the demo area, this is really the phone that I want to have. Uh, it's going to be too big for some, but that's fine for me anyway. Uh, the other big win of it is finally we get an optically, optically, uh, optically stabilized uh, lens in there, which is something that uh, right before, the day before uh, the show, uh, I was in an airport recording my podcast and saying, oh, God, if will, will they'll ever do optically, image, uh, optically stabilized image, OIS, optical image stabilization. I keep using two different words and, and mangling them both. Uh, such a big win for photography because the only areas in which when I do my side-by-side-by-side-by-side-by-side -by -side -by -side -by -side tests of phone cameras, the only area in which the iPhone is not tops is usually when I'm in sort of a semi in indoors, semi-darkened area, and that's when you see, oh, this Nokia has optical image stabilization, this, uh, this LG phone has it, the iPhone doesn't. And so it doesn't take a bad picture, but it doesn't take as good a picture as it could be taking, and that's a problem. Uh, okay, faster processor, that's fine. They'll find ways to exploit that. That's also fine. NFC, again, thank God they finally changed their thinking on this. A couple years ago, I imagined that Apple would never, ever do anything that uh, uh, does not involve... No, 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 we're going to using the magnetic air, the magnetic coastways of the air to contact. The idea of having near-frequency NFC, oh no, that's so vulgar. But now here we have the NFC. And because... But it's... Typical of Apple, they're not going to do it just to have this feature that Android phones have or other people have. It's because, well, now we want to do payments and we can either convince the entire world to use uh, to use uh, our own proprietary uh, uh, zero configuration uh, technology or we can just use NFC and solve that problem immediately. So they solve that problem immediately. 
Hell of a great up, uh, upgrade. Uh, a really great reason if you have not been, if you've been holding off on upgrading your iPhone. And the question that I've been asked by a number of people, including one startlingly, startlingly senior Apple executive <laughs> at the event, uh, yes, I am very much considering switching back to iPhone after this. Uh, iOS 8 is the big, 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 huge change that they've made. They, they've added so many features to the operating system that I've been, that really got me into Android in the first place. Now they've added the phone that I would want to get as, as Android. Really, there uh, there have always been a couple of things that I've always missed in Android, one of which was an iPhone quality camera. And also, the sort of, for lack of a better word, weird apps, those were this interesting one-off apps that are truly artistic creations. Those are the only kinds of apps you can't get for Android because the people who come up with those ideas always make them on the iPhone first. Uh, and so I would be glad to see that again. I expect to have it on day of release, uh, and so I'll have another video for you that sort of gives you through that kind of a walkthrough. Uh, but yeah, a very, very exciting day, very interesting. Uh, as to the iWatch, I have really complicated reaction to it. I was very surprised that they were able to do uh, a phone that uh, a watch that ambitious and make it so small. So they solved one of the big problems that every maker is facing. But I'm not sure they told the whole story on it yet, which isn't surprising because they're not shipping it for four or five or even six months from now. Uh, so, but I remember being a little clearer, much clearer on the, during the iPhone debut and the iPad debut. So I'm not saying that that's a cause for worry, but that's something that I continue to track. And since I can see in the mirror that I'm using as my, uh, to see the back of this this camera, my low battery indicator is blinking. Let's cut this short right there and I'll talk to you, about, uh, talk to you later about the iWatch, which probably deserves its own video. Thank you so much for watching. This is episode eight. We've got four more of these, and I do owe you one because I missed one. Sorry about that, but again, tune in uh, for the weekly uh, sub-episode for more talk about that. From another hotel room somewhere in the United States, the continental United States, I'm Andy Notko. Have a happy.